So then guys, we've just had the announcement of the updated MacBook Air with the M4 chip going inside of it and a brand new starting price of 999 US dollars for the base configuration. But a lot of you guys are wondering, how does the M4 MacBook Air compare to the last generation M3 MacBook Air? Well, today we're going to do a review of specs. We're going to do the M4 MacBook Air versus the M3 MacBook Air. And we're going to compare both the 13.6 inch model and also the 15.3 inch model screen too. And with that, let's begin. So, as you can see right here, we have the MacBook Air 13 and 15 inch M4, the brand new one on the left, and then the MacBook Air 13 and 15 inch models M3, last year's model on the right for this whole comparison. And let's begin. So, lots of these bits and pieces are going to be exactly the same. I'm going to tell you that right now. Like, for example, like the screen technology, they're both LED IPS technologies, the same sort of technology we've had in screens now for the MacBook Airs. And even before this in the MacBook Pros, before we got the mini LED display, and these have been in, say, MacBooks for over 10 years now, Apple have been deploying these. So they're very, very good technology, reliable, but they've got exactly the same here. And then for the actual screen sizes, nothing has changed whatsoever. We've got the exact same design. So since we've got the 13.6 inch design, and then we've also got the 15.3 inch design too on both of these MacBook Airs for both generations. And what that means then for screen resolution for the 13.6 inch model it means we've got a resolution of 2560 by 1664 for both of them for the 13.6 and then for the 15.3 inch model we've got a resolution of 2880 by 1864 on both of those models and just in case you want to know what that means for pixel per inch all four of the models, so I'm talking about the 13-inch models and the 15-inch models from both generations, they have 224 pixels per inch, or 224 PPI. But then, moving on to the display refresh rate, it is still 60 hertz. We don't even have a 90 hertz, sadly. Obviously, we do not have Pro Motion display, because that would be the mini LED one, so that hasn't been updated whatsoever. So this is still a 60 hertz display, no matter which MacBook Air, if you picked them from last year or this year, they are both, or all four models, I should say, are still 60 hertz here. But then, moving over to the brightness and true tone, well, we've got exactly the same results. And no matter if you pick the 13 inch or the 15 inch model it is 500 nits top brightness that you are going to get on these the macbook pros can go further but the macbook airs no matter which model you're going to pick this is what you're going to get and also you do get true tone technology too into the screen now the processor and cpu this is where things do change so this year with the macbook air m4 what we've got is we've got a 10 core CPU set up this time. And what we have inside of us essentially is six efficiency cores and four performance cores. Whereas the M3 had an eight core CPU and this was made up by half and half. So it was four efficiency cores and four performance cores. So Apple have added two more efficiency cores to the M4 chip this time round. And then for GPU core options, you've either got a choice of 8 or 10 core GPU cores. And what I mean by this, if you decide to go for the 13.6 inch baseline version of the M3 MacBook Air or the MacBook Air M4, you will get an 8 core GPU inside it. So this is the cheapest one, the cheapest amount of RAM, uh, the cheapest amount of uh, storage or the lowest amount, you'd get that. But for $100 more, you can actually pay to actually get the 10 core option instead of this. Or if you pick to do an upgrade, like say in storage, going from 256 to 512, you'll automatically get this 10 core GPU option added in, no matter which model that you pick. And also I just throw in there too, that if you decide to pick say the 15 inch MacBook Air, no matter if this was the M3 or the M4, you always by default got the 10 core GPU version. There wasn't the eight core version available for it. So this was really, really great news or still is really great news. If you go for 15 inch, you don't have to worry about upgrading your chipset. You always get the maximum amount of cores inside of it. But then you're probably wondering, well, what does this mean in benchmark then and scores? Well, in C 
CPU, this is probably the best sort of bet we can do here, best kind of comparison. So at the end of the day, the MacBook Air M4 now has a single core score, 3,782, compared to the M3 MacBook Air at 3,084. So we can definitely see a performance gain there. And then in multi-core performance, where well, you can see the difference here, we got 14,726. In some cases, I've seen some people even get, say, 15,000 with the M4 chip. Whereas with the MacBook Air M3, it's around 11,700 or specifically here, 11,741. So definitely we have got an increase there. It's not a huge gain in multi-core performance. I'd say single core is definitely more worth it, what you're going to get it in. But it is interesting to see what the differences are here. Now, the other thing to actually mention at this point is neither of these MacBooks or any of the four models, last generation or current one, they do not have a fan inside. They're completely fanless technology. So it does mean that you shouldn't be pushing out your MacBook Airs too much with like too much 8K video renderings or things like this. Obviously, that's where you'd have to spec up to a MacBook Pro instead. I'm not saying it can't do it. It's just not recommended to actually do this, but there's no fan inside. Now, for RAM amount, things have changed here too. Now, I have said here in the MacBook Air, you can see I put a little star next to eight gigabytes because when the M3 MacBook Air came out, it did come out by default with eight gigabytes of RAM as the lowest amount. But when we got the new M4 MacBook Pros at the beginning of November time, 2024, Apple completely scrapped this and we had the choice of 16 and 24 gigabytes. 16 gigabytes became the lowest amount of RAM that you got in the MacBook Air M3. But obviously for half the year, we got the eight gigabyte option option two. But now the MacBook Air M4 starts at 16 gigabytes and they also offer the 24, but they also now offer the 32 gigabyte option that you could pick for for RAM, exactly the same as say the M4 MacBook Pro has the same amount of RAM options here, the three choices. So this definitely has changed here. Then moving on then to the actual storage amounts. So the internal storage is exactly the same and the options are exactly the same. So it starts at 256 gigabytes of storage, no matter which MacBook Air that you pick, if it's a 13 inch or a 15 inch last generation or current generation, and it can be scaled all the way up to two terabytes. That's the 512 and the one terabyte option in the middle there, what you can actually pick from. For operating system, both of these can run Mac OS 15 Sequoia, and it means most likely that, say, the MacBook Air or the M3 will probably get around about another six years of Mac OS updates or so, whereas the M4 probably more likely to get about seven years, probably just an extra year inside of that. So you obviously the M3 still has a long time um, of life left inside of it. Then for battery life then, well, we did think that with the M4, we're gonna get more efficiencies, but it doesn't seem that this has taken effect inside of the MacBook Airs. So we're still getting up to 18 hours of battery life with the M4, exactly the same as the MacBook Air got up to 18 hours of battery life too. What is a little bit unusual, because say the MacBook Pro, that went up from 22 hours to 24 hours with the M3 to the M4 normal chip. So yeah, that is a little bit unusual there that we've got even not even one hour gain instead. For charging wattage though, they're exactly the same. Obviously they use MagSafe and you can also use you know, USB-C charging too. So we get up to 70 watts of charging, what you can do here on either the M3 or the M4 MacBook Air. For weight-wise, starting out with the 13.6-inch model, it weighs 1.24 kilograms for the M3 or the M4 models. They're exactly the same weight here. There is no differences whatsoever. And just in case you wanted to know, for the 15.3-inch model, it's exactly the same case. If you've got the M3 or the M4, they're no different in weight. They are both 1.51 kilograms in weight for either of the models there. Then for ports wise, we've got exactly the same ports again. We still got MagSafe and we've also got two times USB-C ports. Now, what I will mention here is obviously the M4 Pro and the M4 Max, they're the ones that get Thunderbolt 5 and also the M3 Ultra now too, but the normal M4 still only has Thunderbolt 4 speeds inside of it. What's well, the same speeds that the M3 gets. So just those two USB-C ports, they are Thunderbolt 4 on either of these. You also do get a headphone jack too. 
Then for stereo speakers, well, they're exactly the same on here. We've got four times speakers on the M4 and the M3 MacBook Air, so no changes here. And then for Wi-Fi technology, again, no differences. They both can run on Wi-Fi 6E, what is good enough out there for a MacBook Air. And then for the webcam, there is a little change here. The MacBook Air M4 does have the new 12 megapixel camera, 1080p. It can do things like record your desk and things like this, a little mode there. This was the same camera that was introduced to the M4 MacBook Pro series. So yeah, this is a 1080p camera. So the M4 one is gonna be slightly sharper than what you got with the M3 MacBook Air. Then finally there, moving on to the price. And again, this is a big difference. So the M3 MacBook Air, when it came out, remember this even came out with eight gigabytes of RAM at the time, started at 1,099 US dollars for the 13.6 inch model. And then for the 15.3 inch model, it starts at 1,299 US dollars with eight gigabytes around 256 gigabytes of storage. Now, obviously that went up to 16 gigabytes of RAM around November time, but compare it to the MacBook Air M4. We now get 16 gigabytes of RAM, the newer chip, 256 gigabytes of storage. But if you look right here, the 13.6 inch model now starts at 999 US dollars, $100 less than what the MacBook Air M3 started out with, with less RAM in it too. And it's the same with the 15.3 inch models. They also had eight gigabytes of RAM inside of it for the M3, got changed to 16. But obviously the price has gone down by $100 here too for the 16 gigabyte option now available with 256 gigabytes of storage. So the M4 MacBook Air is definitely a great buy out there. For colors wise then, things have slightly changed here. We do have a brand new color with the MacBook Air M4. We now have that brand new sky blue color. What replaced the space gray, what we used to have on the MacBook Air with the M2 and the M3. So we do have now that color and we've also got silver, starlight and midnight. Those colors have been retained here for the MacBook Air this generation and the last one. And with that, will you be buying a new MacBook Air or will you buy yourself a new MacBook Pro, say? So to me, the MacBook Air with the M4 is fantastic value out there for 999 US dollars now, especially that you get the 16 gigabytes of RAM. Obviously, I would have liked to maybe had, say, 512 gigabytes. Personally, I would say if it was 1,099 US dollars with 512 gigabytes, that would have been a good deal, but you know, we can't win all the time here. But still, it's definitely a great value considering this time last year, we had the MacBook Air M3 and that was costing us a thousand US dollars, dollars, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, and it costs that much. So yeah, Apple have done some good things here, reduced the price down by $100. We now got 16 gigabytes of RAM, and obviously we do have the new chip inside of it. But let me know your thoughts. Do you think the new MacBook Air is definitely worth it over the last generation? Are you gonna get one? Well, let me know in the comments below. And with that as well, guys, it's time to wrap up this video too. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. Also, if you wanna hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell too. Until next time guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye bye.